Help! One of my church members is doubting the Trinity by Joseph Kidder and Timothy Bays. Joseph Kidder is a professor of applied theology and discipleship at the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University, Berrien Springs, Michigan. Timothy Bays is the pastor of the Chowchilla and Madera Seventh-day Adventist churches in the Central California Conference. In one of my, Timmy's, previous churches, some members questioned the doctrine of the Trinity. The more videos they watched, the more convinced they became that Seventh-day Adventists' understanding of the Trinity was severely flawed. They especially questioned our belief in the personhood of the Holy Spirit. I, Joe, have received several calls from people advocating an anti-Trinitarianism position. With great zeal, they asserted that the doctrine of the Trinity came from the Catholic Church rather than from the Bible. We went to Scripture, and below are some of the lessons we have learned. We share them in the hope that they will be useful to pastors and church leaders seeking to guide church members regarding the Trinity doctrine. The Dilemma of the Trinity To properly deal with this topic in your local church, it will be helpful to know how your church members may have come to question this doctrine. This is best learned by listening to them and asking questions. Most will be very happy to share their journey with you. We found that many people who doubt the Trinity fit into one of the following groups. First are those who are genuinely searching for truth. They may have questions about things they have read in the Bible, Ellen White's writings, or other literature. Their questions about the Trinity are not antagonistic in nature. Instead, they are simply seeking answers to their questions. People in this category are not likely to leave the church, but they are in need of solid biblical answers. Second, and probably the majority, are those who found videos or articles about the Trinity online that left them with more questions. For this group, two factors are integral to whether they will remain in the church. First, they need someone who is non-abrasive, honest, and patient to sit down with them and study what Scripture teaches about this subject. Second, they must have solid friendships with people in the church. If neither of these things take place, they are likely to either leave the church or, in some cases, leave the Christian faith altogether. The third group are those who were already drawn to sensationalism before they found anti-Trinitarian information. Some of them may have come into the Adventist faith attracted by new and startling truths. While searching for truth is undoubtedly positive, many in this group have quote-unquote itching ears for new and sensational knowledge. Rather than experiencing the satisfaction of a new relationship with Jesus each day, they are unsatisfied with the light they have received so far and are looking for more. Sucked into the never-ending wormhole of anti-Trinitarian information online, dialogue with this group becomes most difficult. Some are antagonistic, undermine the church, and attempt to influence visitors and newly baptized members. Among those we have worked with, we found individuals who had previously experienced conflict with people in the church. These members found in anti-Trinitarianism a way to escape from this emotional trauma. Situations like this are difficult because the presenting problem, anti-Trinitarianism, is only a symptom of a deeper root, emotional pain. Focusing on correcting their theology may be temporarily effective. However, until the wounds of the past are healed, the person will not be truly healthy. Instead, working on healing the wounds of the past may be more effective. Once conflict is resolved and healing takes place, dealing with doctrinal issues becomes easier. The journey of each person in your church who has questions about the Trinity will be different. You will need to sit down and listen carefully to understand exactly what they believe about the Trinity. Some may believe that the Holy Spirit is a force and not a person, or that Christ is less divine than the Father. Others may simply not understand the metaphor used to describe the Trinity. If the questions and curiosities of the people in the above groups are ignored, if they think they are right and the church is wrong, or if they are fully converted to anti-Trinitarianism, they are very difficult to persuade otherwise. Instead, you will find them excitedly and militantly trying to convert others away from your church and into their quote-unquote new light. How do they get their information? The current debate in Adventism over the Trinity has intensified 
since the church voted its fundamental belief about the Trinity in 1980 and has increased rapidly with the rise of the Internet. The Internet's virtual environments often function as echo chambers. Online content creators are skilled at making videos with what seems like new and relevant information. Internet search engine algorithms push this content such that the viewer quote-unquote lives in a world where everyone is anti-Trinitarian, and the person sees anyone with opposing beliefs as ignorant or even apostate. Among such viewers, videos and social media posts are more popular, although a few blogs and articles are also available. What is so attractive about anti-Trinitarian doctrine? Anti-Trinitarianism is attractive for several reasons. For many, knowing the truth is a fundamental need. When presented with a new idea, the natural human response is to find out whether the idea is true. One thing that makes anti-Trinitarianism attractive is that it raises big questions of truth and trust. When confronted with these new ideas, people may begin to ask existential questions, such as, has my church or pastor been lying to me? If the doctrine of the Trinity is false, what other church doctrines are false? Sometimes the shock of hearing that the doctrine of the Trinity may be unbiblical is enough to draw some people into anti-Trinitarianism. An additional jolt comes when they hear claims that the doctrine came from the Catholic Church rather than Scripture. Extremely bothered, they watch more and more videos to determine whether this is the truth. And the more they watch, the more convinced they will become. If the person is already prone to sensationalism or conspiracy theories, they are even more likely to become hooked. Still others are convinced that the way the Adventist pioneers believed is the only accurate understanding of Scripture. When presented with evidence that some pioneers did not believe in the Trinity or did not use the word favorably, the questioner may begin to believe that today's mainline Adventist church has strayed from its roots. While it is important to maintain a strong connection with our roots, we also cannot forget that the pioneers' concept of quote-unquote present truth was strongly tied to quote-unquote progressive revelation. This means that they believed God was gradually leading his people into a brighter and fuller understanding of truth. Anti-Trinitarianism is not one of the quote-unquote old landmarks of Adventism. Adventist pioneers came from various denominational backgrounds and had different concepts of what the Godhead was. But over time, they came to better understand the doctrine of the Trinity. As a result of their study of Scripture, this doctrine is one of the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church today. Preventative Care, a Personal Testimony After I, Timmy, realized that a few church leaders and a newly baptized couple in my church had become fully converted to anti-Trinitarianism, we began to study the concept of the Trinity and specifically the divinity of the Holy Spirit each Sabbath afternoon and continue that study for the next two years. In this small church of about 30 attendees, the original five who questioned the Trinity decided to leave and start a home church. However, the people who were on the fence about the issue saw from Scripture that what our church teaches about the Trinity is biblical, and this prevented them from leaving the church. The rest of the church members, including myself, became more confident in the validity of Trinity doctrine and, more importantly, have a much deeper understanding of the work of the Trinity in our lives. Conclusion Anti-Trinitarian teachings have been popular among some groups of Adventists, often because of a desire to search for the truth or sometimes because of a bent toward sensationalism. While these small groups see the doctrine of the Trinity as unbiblical, the Adventist Church has derived this doctrine by studying what Scripture says about salvation and how the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are working together to save lost humanity. It is important to ensure that our church members see this biblical picture of the Trinity in our sermons and Bible studies. It is equally important that those who are questioning this doctrine find us as pastors and leaders to be understanding and patient listeners. We should be informed and ready to respond to their objections in a loving and respectful way that affirms their quest for truth. When we see people the way God sees them, we will be able to truly love the people who disagree with us. We will be inspired to pray for them and with them. Our prayer 
is that they may not only understand and believe the doctrine of the Trinity, but also be able to experience the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. For bibliographical and biblical references on this article, and for much more content for pastors and church leaders, please visit ministrymagazine.org.